Hi, Libra. Here's your horoscope for May 2024th, brought to you by planetswithin.com. I'm astrologer Joseph Anthony. All right, we have a huge month ahead, and this is because your ruler, Venus, right here, is in one of the signs that it naturally rules. You're associated with um, Venus, and so is Taurus. So here we have all these planets aligning in this eighth house in a wonderful configuration. And so there's going to be a couple of conjunctions going on in this eighth house of transformation, finances, sexuality, shared resources. This could be a very big month for many of you if you play your cards right. So this reading is for anyone who has a Libra rising or is a Libra sun sign. It's a general sun sign reading. So we have, um, you know, some really important stuff to look at here. And this entire month is all about that creative projects, financial endeavors, investments, uh, things that you share with other people, uh, things pertaining to credit cards and taxes and, you know, finances that are outside of your immediate uh, control uh, that other people control. And so this month is all about connecting with others and somehow interacting with a lot of them on some level, whether it's personal, professional, uh, psychological, you know, because the eighth house has to do with psychology. And so we see that this is going to be a very important month, the entire month, because of these alignments. So as we begin the month, we have Mars in your opposite sign right here. So anything to do with other people are, is absolutely being highlighted right now. So maybe one or two people uh, in your life that may be irritating you or, you know, you have a lot to do with them. There's a lot of conversation. There's a lot of activity here. Okay. And so this is going to be very, very important. Uh, we also have Pluto getting ready to go retrograde for the first time this year in the fifth house. And I'll talk about that in a second. But overall, what I'm seeing here is a major transformational month. You know that last month we had the eclipse right here in the seventh house, which is opening up this doorway for new opportunities, new people to enter your life. And some of the old ones are not going to be there anymore by the time the year is over. So this is why this energy is transforming from this, the seventh house now with the sun and everything else activating the eighth house is this transformational period that you're entering. And so that's how I see this here. So let's take a deeper dive into the uh, planet uh, aspects. So here we have Pluto that goes retrograde in Aquarius on May the 2nd. So here it is, stationary position, fifth house. Normally, this is not a big deal. This is about projects from the past, situations from the past, uh, having to do with maybe, um, you know, former lovers. Maybe there's some issues with your children that are coming up from the past, but it's in Aquarius. So it has to do with community. It has to do with um, uh, acquaintances from the past. These are all continue to resurface this entire year for you since Pluto will go retrograde. Not a big deal. Uh, in September, Pluto will drop back into the fourth house for about a month, month and a half, and then it'll stay there. And again, that's where you're, you know, the nostalgic time and going back into the past will be more important. But, uh, and then after that, it'll come out in November and go back into uh, the fifth house and stay here for the next 19 years or so. So Pluto retrograding uh, is not a big deal, but it will kind of give you a psychological, you know, appearance or psychological sort of thinking towards the past. So this is going to be, um, you know, reconnecting with the past before moving on. Okay, let's see what else we have. We have the new moon in Taurus on the seventh, highlighting the eighth house. Very important as well. So once again, when we have a new moon, uh, this is going to be at 18 degrees of Taurus, wherever that is in your actual birth chart. That's the area that gets lit up. And so a new moon in the eighth house is a new financial opportunity. It's a new opportunity to connect with others, sharing your resources, uh, you know, digging deeper into your financial uh, investments, uh, digging deeper into things that are, uh, let's say, troubling you that you need to bring to the surface. Now, this new moon is going to be conjunct Uranus, so there's a lot of surprises in the mix the next two weeks. Some of these surprises could be out of your control, such as financial matters in the stock markets and uh, financial currencies changing and all that, and I've talked about that in other videos. So there could be you know, thoughts and talks uh, about that. But for the most part, it looks like uh, something new is coming into the picture that you need to focus on some new opportunity, new job, new investments, 
uh, you know, new people coming into your life to help you in some way. And uh, that's how I see this. It's uh, it's it's making a good aspect to, to Saturn. So there's, there seems to be a lot of work or maybe you're doing something with your health that's improving your health. So I see this more as a positive energy and not so much a negative energy. So, um, you know, Jupiter's also loosely in the mix here, too. So I would say this is going to be something where, you know, it's something new that you need to really take a look at. OK, Mercury also enters Taurus on the 15th and 16th right there. So you can see here now five planets in the eighth house. So this is a tremendous amount of energy here. Now, Mercury and Taurus tends to slow things down a little bit. It's about getting back to the basics. It's also about, um, you know, realizing what's important to you, sort of your values. And with all these planets in Taurus, Taurus rules values. And so you are really evaluating your the meaning of your life, the purpose, um, what you're doing in this new project or endeavor, or possibly this new relationship that you find yourself in, possibly business or personal, uh, or both. And, and so Mercury here gives us an opportunity to slow down our thinking a little bit so that we could process information, so we could figure things out. And so over the next three weeks, this is what we'll be doing with Mercury going through Taurus. We have next Venus conjunct Uranus. Wow, the 18th is spectacular. So we have Venus conjuncting Uranus. So this could be surprises again in the financial sector, but it also could be surprises with relationships. So be very aware of that because at the same time, we also have the sun conjuncting Jupiter at 28 degrees. So there's so much activity here in this eighth house. It's like almost, I hate to say it, but it's almost like kind of winning the lottery in a sense. You know, with all this positive energy flowing in. And so I would say, don't be afraid, uh, you know, do something out of the ordinary or try something different because the planetary alignments that I'm seeing here tend to favor you at this time, uh, financially especially, or attracting other people especially, uh, both of those two because this is such positive energy. Sun conjunct Jupiter does things on a big scale and it's happy-go-lucky. You know, Venus conjunct Uranus surprises and, you know, excitement and something different out of the ordinary. And so this could be a very uh, splendid uh, alignment for the 18th. Now, of course, the energy will keep leading into it up to the 18th and it'll still be in effect past the 18th. But once the sun moves out of Taurus, then the energy weakens a bit and it goes into, you know, Gemini, which it does here on the 20th. So you have a couple of days to utilize this energy. So on the 20th, we have the sun moving into Gemini, also very favorable for you because uh, Gemini is an air sign just like yours. So a need for communication is absolutely highlighted. So in the ninth house, it's about exploring. It's about traveling. It's about your philosophy, the meaning of life, the purpose, your religious beliefs. And so you'll be questioning all of that. But when the sun is going through Gemini in the, in the ninth, it makes you more playful. The charming side of Libra comes out. And so there's a need to interact and converse and to express yourself in some way. So I'm going to suggest that this entire month, you will need to talk to people or express yourself in some way. Get that enthusiasm going, get it out and, and get really excited about it. Because whatever you're doing, uh, there definitely is a lot of excitement in the air this month. The full moon in Sagittarius continues the theme of communication right here. And uh, this is going to be at two degrees of Sagittarius. So wherever that is in your actual birth chart, that's the area that gets lit up. So we have a full moon from the sun to the moon right there in the third house of communication. So once again, either traveling or expression or writing or speaking or doing videos or, you know, uh, maybe a book, publishing a book or doing a blog, whatever it is, this is absolutely being amplified for you here once again. But a full moon is about realizations. So you're coming to some sort of realization about yourself and your thinking and what's happening to you and the people in your life and the family members in your life, your neighbors, everything that's associated with this third house. And so this is going to be a realization, a come to coming to terms uh, with your life and where you are right now and how you fit into everything. OK, so that's what it usually does with a full moon in Sagittarius. Now, Venus enters Gemini on the 24th right there. Your ruler now switches signs, goes into the ninth house. So once again, we're seeing this positive energy coming in where you want to be playful and you want to have fun and you want to travel and you want to explore. And Venus is your ruler and it's all about relationships. 
So get out there, mingle, join some groups or organizations, find some people that you just enjoy being around, and converse, interact, have fun. Because the last alignment of the month is another one that's huge. Jupiter enters Gemini again. The last time Jupiter was in Gemini was 12 years ago. So here, Jupiter, the entire year, will be in this ninth house all the way till May 2025, helping you again with socializing, traveling, exploring, teaching, learning, you know, education, uh, philosophy, meaning of life, politics, all of this stuff that's associated with the ninth house now gets amplified. But Jupiter in the ninth house has another benefit. It feels lucky. It feels fortunate. It feels more optimistic. So this is going to be a very good time for many of you if you play your cards right and you stay out of fear and doubt. Okay, so this is, this is a month where it's going to completely change your thinking and the way you see yourself and the world and your belief systems. So go ahead and move forward with your plans. All right, well, have a great month, Libra, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye for now.